All right, let's get started. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Kerrison. I'm on the customer success team here at Commerce 7. Um, today, I will be talking about our club membership query feature. Um, the club membership query feature is a, a feature that you can use to create a list of club memberships that meets a criteria that you determine and configure. Um, by doing so, you can obtain metrics and data points um, that you can use to help monitor the success and health of your club offerings, um, set targets for your team, um, things like KPIs with the data that you extract from our club membership query. So in this presentation, I'm gonna show you some um, ways that you can extract some information from your club memberships um, and come up with these reports uh, and targets for your team. So let's jump right to the first example. Um, so the first query I want to talk about is how do you determine what your club member count is on a specific date? Um, this is a query that you can run to get a count, and then you can use this count for a variety of different reasons and use cases that um, I'll talk about later in the presentation as well. Um, but it's really uh, a good uh, data for you to be able to know how to extract is what is your club membership count on a specific date? Um, in Commerce 7. So to do so, um, generally you're gonna start with a list of your, all your club members. So you're gonna begin the query with your active and canceled. Um, so this will list out all the club members that you have um, both active and canceled. Then you wanna start removing people from that list. Um, so the second condition that you need to create in the customer query is uh, to remove the signups that happen after that X date. So these signups happen after the X date. So they weren't club members at that time. So we need to remove them from that list. And then the third condition is to remove the cancellations that happen before X date. So um, if the cancellation happened before X date, then that means that as of X date, that club member is canceled and should not be on this list. So by performing these three actions, you're going to be able to find a club member count on X date. So let's uh, demonstrate how you can do that in the uh, admin panel here. Um, so yeah, you land on the dashboard, you click on marketing, you go to queries, and then you're gonna navigate over to the club membership query section. I'm gonna click on add club membership query and um, we're gonna title it club member count as of, let's say, December 31st, 2021. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is to create a list of um, all your club members. So the following club membership condition is equal to active or um, canceled. So that's the first thing. Um, and if we execute this, um, we should expect to see the same number as what you see on your membership list. So here, I'm just gonna reload and present the count. There's a count of 33 members um, that are both active or canceled. So if I go here, um, my active and canceled list, I should expect to see uh, 33. All right, um, so now we wanna navigate over to the query section back here. All right, so now we wanna start removing those other conditions that we talked about. Um, so we're gonna add a condition set that says a club membership is not found in the following condition. And you wanna set sign up date is greater than December 31st, uh, 2021. So that's gonna remove all the customers that signed up after um, that are on this list. And then we wanna further refine it by saying club membership is not found in 
the following club membership condition cancel date is less than December 31st. All right. And so by doing this, um, I'm going to be able to get a count of my um, membership base as of December 31st, 2021. So execute query. So yeah, as of that date, there's 21 club members um, in this list. So yeah, that's a that's how you would find um, the number of club members that you have on a specific date, and then with this information, you can start you know using it to um, measure growth uh, in subscription, measuring cancellations, churn, and things like that, which we'll talk about later in the presentation as well. Um, but this is yeah the, a good fundamental um, query that you can run to be able to run a lot of metrics off of it. All right, um, let's go to the second slide. All right, so next I wanna talk about how you can find a list of club members um, that have not placed an order recently. Um, so the purpose of this list um, could be for a few things. Um, it can help you identify club members who are perpetually and habitually skipping their memberships or their club package and shipments. Um, but still taking advantage of club perks. Um, so this is a good way to be able to identify club members who haven't had any orders, uh, club orders recently in a given time frame. Um, you can also look at it from a different angle. Um, you know, you're identifying club members who are maybe losing interest um, and are skipping their last few shipments uh, and may cancel and you can um, reach out and try to win back that business or, or prevent them from canceling their club membership. Um, so to do that, uh, you'll need to create a club membership query using the customer condition of last order date. So let's demonstrate how you can do that. Um, navigating over to the admin panel again, we're gonna go to queries club membership query. And we're going to say club members with no orders since June 2021. Um, and for this, you want to say club membership is found in the following customer condition, because the customer condition has a condition for last order date. And what you could do is have that set to less than whatever um, time frame you want to analyze. In this case, we want to go back all the way to June 2021. And uh, that's how you would configure that query. It'll give you a list of club memberships who have uh, not been processed um, or have any, any orders since June. Uh, 2021. All right, moving along. Um, next query I want to talk about is um, creating a um, query for club members' orders outside of the club shipment. So to pull it off, um, we're going to first create an order query. So it's not going to be a customer or a club membership query. It's going to be an order query with club membership condition. Um, you want to create a second condition set to exclude um, club orders. And then you want to create a third condition set for the time period that you want to analyze in terms of how much orders are your club members processing outside of the club? Um, so we're gonna navigate over to the query section again, um, but this time we wanna do an order query. Uh, 
Um, here we want to title it club member orders outside of club packages. Um, the customer condition, and we want to say club member is an active club member. So that's the first. We want um, a list of all orders processed by a customer who's an active club, mem club member. So that's the first condition. Um, and then we wanted to add a second condition set to exclude club orders from this list because um, we want to only be looking at inbound and POS transactions. So um, we want to do channel. We want to say order is not found in the channel of club. And then lastly, we want to configure the date range that you want to look at um, for this query. So you can do order date is, let's say you want to look at from for the month of March, you can do March. Um, order date is less than. March 31st, oops, March 31st. And uh, this will give you um, a query of orders that, a list of orders that is placed by an active club member that is not a club order uh, between this date range, this time period. All right. Um, next uh, club uh, related metric I want to talk about is the acquisition channel. Um, so the acquisition channel isn't available as a condition for club membership query, but it is available in the club membership export. There's going to be a column for acquisition channel, and you can pull account from the spreadsheet that is exported. Um, this will help you break down where your signups are coming from. You can figure out a percentage of uh, what, si what percentage of signups come from the tasting room or the POS versus the web. Um, and another cool thing that you can, or a cool metric that you can calculate with this information is that you can calculate the conversion rate at the tasting room by looking at um, the, number of POS signups, um, signups that happen on the POS um, as and divide that by the number of orders processed by non-club members at the start of the time period. So uh, let's work through um, how you can get all this information and how you can calculate this conversion rate. So um, the first thing you want to do is perform a club membership export where um, there's going to be a column for acquisition channel, and you can analyze that. So to do that, you're going to navigate over to the club section, memberships, and um, under actions, export club membership, and export my 33 club memberships. Um, so I've exported it and it's gonna look like this. Um, one of the columns, column AU is the acquisition channel. So this breaks down where the um, club signup took place. And based on this information, you can uh, figure out a breakdown or a percentage of which you know the the most common ways your uh, club memberships are being signed up. Um, the next piece of information that we need for this is um, the denominator here, which is the number of POS orders um, placed by non-club members at the start of the time period that you want to analyze.
Um, so for that one, um, so you're going to get a count either from the spreadsheet, you can just sort this and get a count of how many POS signups uh, you've had. Um, and then for the number of orders, um, we need to create an order query with um, the customer condition of customers who were not club members at the start of the time period. So um, do queries, uh, we're gonna do an order query. Um, we need to create an order query with a club membership condition. But when we click on the drop down here, there isn't a club membership condition available. Um, so what we need to first do is to convert the club membership tag that we create into a customer tag. So on here, um, we already built a query. Let's use this one because we've already done it um, as of December 31st. Uh, when you execute, you have the option to create tag from list. So you can say club members as of 1231. Right. So um, tag is successfully created. But at this point, this is a club membership tag, which cannot be used for the order query that we need. Because on here, um, we don't have a um, club membership option. So now we need to convert that club membership tag into a customer tag. And to do that, um, you'll say customer who are club members as of uh, 1231. For the customer query, we do have a condition for club membership. And so we can then, using this method, convert the club membership uh, tag into a customer tag. Uh, club members as of 1231, add customer query, execute this. Um, and then I will create tag from list customers who are club members. All right, so now we have a new customer tag that we can use um, to calculate this denominator of how many POS orders were processed by non-club members. Um, so you can figure out the conversion rate at the tasting room. Um, so we go to queries again and create an order query. Um, we want the order to first be only POS orders. Um, POS orders by non-members as of 12.31. So we want to look at all uh, POS orders to start, and then we want to further refine it by all POS orders that um, are processed by non-members as of um, December 31st. So we're going to do is not found in um, tag equal to um, customers who are club members as of. So the list is going to remove all orders processed by customers who are who have this tag. So it will give you a count of um, the number of orders you need to use as the denominator for this calculation. All right, um, so that's that one. Um, recurring revenue uh, is another good metric that you can generate off of the, the stats that you can pull using club membership query. 
Um, so to figure out recurring revenue, um, it's a combination of average order value and current member count in the time period that you want to analyze. Um, so to figure out the average order value, um, the easiest way to do that would be to use the um, sales by channel report um, because it has the total and the count presented right there. And you can figure out the average order value for club orders um, in a given time period. So we're gonna navigate over to reports and look at the sales by channel and get that value for the average order value, average order, uh, average club order value. So we're gonna look at only club orders. And let's say we wanna look at um, since the start of the year. Um, and we have the total along with the number of orders. And with this two information, you can figure out the um, average order value for your club orders. Um, we talked about how you can get your club member counts um, on any given date using the, the method that we talked about in the second slide here. Um, and with that information, you can look at different periods and calculate your um, growth rate by comparing your rec recurring revenue um, from one shipment or time period against another shipment or time period. So when looking at recurring revenue, because of the nature of the um, club model, um, you need to decide on the right time period to analyze. Uh, you wanna make sure that um, there was, if you're comparing a time period where there is a club shipment versus when there isn't, then the um, revenue numbers aren't gonna be accurate. So depending on the club structure, you wanna set the time period to be quarterly or every three months, um, depending on how often you're doing shipments. And if you're using the subscription um, model, then um, you can maybe look at monthly recurring revenue because your shipments are spread out. And that would be an accurate depiction of um, how your club's growing and how your revenue, uh, recurring revenue is looking. Um, so you can, with all this information, figure out a growth rate for your recurring revenue by um, looking at your current period recurring revenue and then comparing it against your previous uh, periods of recurring revenue, and then you'll be able to figure out a growth rate for your recurring revenue for your club. Cool. Moving along, um, with the information that uh, we talked about today, you can look at your club membership's retention rate. So a rate that measures uh, the number of membership a winery retains over a given period of time. Um, so we talked about how you find um, club member count on X, X date, which will give you the answer to these first two variables. Um, and then you can look for the number of signups within a time period, um, also using the club membership query. It's gonna be a pretty simple query. Um, that you can generate. Let's go to query, club membership. Um, sign up date is greater than uh, January 1st. And if you're looking for uh, a specific date range, then you can do the greater than or less than. Um, so this is January 1st till now, but if you wanna have an end date, you can add a second condition like so. Um, so based on these three variables, you can figure out your club membership retention rate. This is maybe something that you can um, do per quarter or depending on how frequent you're running shipments and see if um, shipment to shipment, your retention rate is getting better or worse. 
and, and make business decisions accordingly. All right. Um, you can also calculate your churn rate or cancellation rate. Um, you can look at the number of can cancellation within a time period um, and divide that by the number of memberships at the start of the time period. So again, using the club membership count on X date um, method, we can come, we can figure out this denominator here. Um, and then for the cancellation, very similar to what we just did. Um, I'll just create a new one. Cancellations in 2021, for example, um, let's say cancel date is greater than um, January 1st, 2021, add another condition, cancel date is less than December 31st. And this will get, give you a count of all the cancellations that took place within that date range and time period. And with that information, you can figure out your churn rate and then with same idea, uh, compare it um, to different time periods and see how your churn rate is doing shipment to shipment or quarter to quarter. All righty. So that's the end of my presentation. I'm just gonna open it up for questions now. Feel free to ask any questions related to what we just talked about or any other um, Karma 7 functionality uh, and be happy to help. Awesome, we do have one question in the chat here from Lisa. Uh, so question to sales channel report. Uh, can you filter different clubs as well? I have three different wine club options sales channel report um no that doesn't have a filter for the club type um but you can still get that information using the the query it might just take a little bit longer um so you can do um first create a club membership query for that membership and then convert it into a customer tag um, and then run an order query against that customer tag. So I'll show you an example of just one club. Uh, let's say 12 bottle club members. So that's step one. Um, and then convert it to a customer query. So this will be customers who have a 12 bottle of club members. Um, execute, then you create a tag uh 12 bottle club member customers um then you run an order query against that tag um for clubs so uh channel will be club and customer condition tag uh, you might have to start typing it in to generate the result just yeah. based on the ui what did i take it as customer i think it was 12 oh, yeah. in the 12 bottle club or something yeah 12 there we go thank yeah. you no problem. Yeah, so this will give you a list of orders. Um, 
that are processed by that customer segment. And then you can figure out average order value by dividing the total to the order count. Awesome. It's a wonderful example. Hmm. Um, and then Steve's also asking here, is there a way to help identify the flip to ship people? Uh, so basically those, those orders that are initially placed as shipping orders, but then are transition, sorry, initially placed as pickup orders, but then are transitioned to shipping orders. Um, he thinks it would be valuable to use that in other calculations. Is there a way to identify, identify those orders? flip to ship. Um, not through queries. Um, Yeah, is it might be a column in the order export. Um, yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Um, it's not available through queries, but I think it might be something you can figure out um, on the order export, but uh, we'll yeah, get awesome. back to you on that one. Yeah, Steve, if you could throw your email address in the chat there, we'll follow up with you on that. Awesome, next question. Uh, so Lee, I have a general question. I'm new to C7 and just went live. I just processed a package and have some questions. Uh, so Lee, if you wanna unmute yourself and ask those questions, we'll be happy to address those now. Yeah, hi there. <clears throat> um, yeah, I just had a um, question regarding um, changing of orders when customers come to the tasting room. I, I know this is off topic and I apologize if, um, if it's in the way, but um, the um, system that I'm coming from had the variability so that when the customer came in, I could um, edit the order um, at the point of sale and make changes um, either up or down, um, like add to the package that the customer is taking. Um, but I see in, in C7 um, that it's, um, it's fixed. I have to refund the customer if they want to change. Um, I mean, we're, we're running a traditional um, wine club and for us that fits our business model um, because of wine availability. Number one, we're a small boutique winery. We don't, we don't have um, a lot of um, wines available, um, you know, continually throughout the year. We, we um, target for our releases um, certain wines. So those wines won't be available. So it's hard for people to make uh, the, the choice um, the variable choice in the other um, subscription club. So I, I'm finding it that that may be something uh, that is difficult for us to handle when p customers come into the uh, tasting room and want to change things up. Um, is Do I have to refund every time that that happens to the customer? Yeah, um, so at this time it would require a refund. Mm -hmm. um, we do send, um, a two week and two day reminder email before the transaction is processed. And that's right. sort of where we hope um, customers log in and make their selections so that after the transaction is processed, um, right. there's no exchange, but we don't, we don't currently have a functionality design for that specific use case of, of exchanging bottles. Okay. It's something that we've talked about internally with the product team um, and is on our radar. Um, but it's not uh, not available right now. That, it would require. Yeah. I found that 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 customers will definitely upsell when they come in to pick up their package, um, and they'll say, "Well, add it to my add it to my you know my order." So we'll just end up having to on those cases just make a new um, inbound um, order for them. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the the other thing was is I I was up against um, just going live and had to run a, um, a package immediately as soon as we went live. So I didn't have the, the um, um, ability to do a two week and a two day um, e you know, email campaign prior to it. So I'll see next time if that has some change on people changing their orders. I mean, the, the, I, the way I found people don't seem to respond to the emails prior to um, the package release, they, they, they only seem to respond to a, a receipt coming to their, their inbox that says, oh, yeah. you've been charged, you know, and then they yeah. go, oh, no, wait, I wanted, even though we've given them ample time, you know, um, it, then I'm speaking with my other club, you know, when running it with uh, order port. Yeah. Um, so, um, it, and my other question is, if, so if we're racking up a lot of refunds, is there, is there a charge for refunds every time we process a refund? 
um, yeah. from a gateway standpoint. Yeah, from a from a payment gateway. Because uh, I know you guys handle your own yeah. I'm not internal, you know, um, payment processing. So I, I, I don't know. If, should I direct that to maybe Alicia or somebody in in payment gateway? Yeah. Um, I don't know the answer to that off the top okay. of my head for if refunds incur the standard transaction fee. Um, because but... I can see I can see racking up quite a few refunds here. If that's going to be the, the way it, it, you know, already I'm seeing like half a dozen yeah. people uh, wanting to add or change their order, you know, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this gets <Yeah>. expensive. <laughs> um, but I and think... then, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I think not. But we'll we'll get back to you on that. Okay. One. And then the, my last question was um, in the email marketing. I seem to have, to have I, I was able to set up a, a dynamic tag, um, but the when I went to, and this was the onboarding, um, letting my customers know that we've changed um, our, to uh, this software system and, you know, um, ch- you know, um, uh, get it, you know, you can go into your, set up your password and blah, blah, blah. Right. And I, mm. I couldn't seem to capture all of the customers that I have in the, in the uh, database with the dynamic tag. And I don't know why exactly that happened. I only, I have over 900, I think in the um, total customers um, that, that got migrated and I could only capture about 324 of them. And I don't know, I'm not sure why that, um, why that didn't hmm. pull everybody in. Um, and, and I did, and I did a dynamic tag that said, um, um, only get customers that are subscribed. So I don't know if that was the wrong way to do it or. Yeah. I mean, some of the customer records on your database that makes up the 900 might not have that email marketing status of subscribe and maybe only 300 of them do. Um, that one, I think will be better if we work through on a support ticket and just kind of, cause we need okay. to look at the details and how you've configured it right. and maybe get some examples of names that you expect to see, but aren't seeing. Yeah. Cause uh, I, we'll went, I, I even went back and changed some of the ones who I found were not subscribed to subscribe, but the, the total, the, the count didn't go up. So I'm not sure exactly if I was doing something wrong. So like you said, I'll, I'll, I'll do that on a support tech ticket. I won't take up any more of your time then. So, sounds okay. good. Sounds good. Yeah. Happy Great. Thank you there. so much. Appreciate no it. No problem. Um, so we do have another question. Libby is asking, is there a way to add a photo to the club membership profile? Um, no, not at this time. Um, unless the, the customer uses the Facebook login, that's the only time where we pull in, pull in uh, their profile picture. Um, that's going to be on the customer record, um, which will also show up on the club membership record. So that's one way to do it, but there's no um, upload functionality at this time. Awesome. And Libby will get you that flip to ship information as well too. I see, I saw that note there. I think we have one more. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hurry. Nothing else left. Just leave it for maybe 20, 30 more seconds uh, for last minute questions. Sounds good. All right. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Um, hope you're having a good day and uh, see you all next week. Actually, we won't see you next week because we will oh, be having a company right. meeting in Niagara Falls. <laughs> so we're all going to be together, um, getting together since we all work yes. remotely. So we won't have a free training Friday next week. Just so you all are all aware. Uh, we yeah. will pick that up the week after. Sorry about that. Good catch. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> okay. All see right. you guys later. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Bye.